burning fat is a pretty high priority for most people because it's gonna make them look better, have more energy and feel less hungry. It is true that fat oxidation as a phenomenon has its benefits, but it's not always the same thing as actually losing body fat. Fasting and exercise, they can make you burn fat in the mitochondria for energy, but it doesn't necessarily mean that you're gonna end up losing body fat. Disappointed! Fasting is just going to create an environment of higher fat oxidation, and that's going to make it easier for you to actually lose body fat. In this video, I'm gonna give you six ways to burn more fat while fasting. Number one, drink coffee or teas. Coffee or caffeinated teas have a thermic effect on your metabolism that can improve fat oxidation as well as fat loss. Here are a few examples. Caffeine blocks a neurotransmitter called adenosine, which inhibits fatigue and makes you feel more energized. Coffee can increase exercise performance by up to 11-12%. to 12%. Caffeine promotes lipolysis, the conversion of fat acids into energy, and activates sweat gland density during physical activity. Increased fat burning is more pronounced in lean people. A study found that caffeine increased lipid oxidation in lean women by 29% and by 10% in overweight women. Coffee can raise resting metabolic rate by 3 to 11%, which will make you burn more calories. Drinking coffee can improve glucose metabolism and help with type 2 diabetes. Reduced insulin resistance enhances nutrient partitioning, and your body will be better able to digest carbohydrates. The problem with coffee and all other caffeinated beverages is that your body is going to adapt to it after a while and it's going to burn less calories. That's why it's a good idea to cycle on and off of it every once in a while to reset your body sensitivity to caffeine. Number two, move around. Going on a diet and eating fewer calories leads to metabolic adaptation, which reduces the amount of calories your body burns. Part of it has to do with you carrying less body weight, but it's also due to decreased spontaneous non-exercise activity thermogenesis called NEAT. If you're restricting calories, your need tends to automatically drop because you have less energy and you start to compensate for it by moving less. This includes all the other physical activities that aren't exercise, such as moving around the house, fidgeting, twitching, tapping, and general vigor. Low-intensity activities like NEAT are already burning predominantly fat for fuel because they're not that strenuous. Anything that you can do while breathing normally through your nose incorporates fat oxidation. To overcome metabolic adaptation, you want to still stay physically active and schedule times for NEAT. Going for walks every day, taking the stairs, parking the car further away and fidgeting more will increase the total amount of calories you're burning per day. Number 3. Get a good night's sleep. The first thing people do when they want to lose weight is exercise more, restrict their calories more and starve themselves. But they rarely think about sleep. Sleep is actually very important when it comes to losing body fat. Just 4 nights of sleeping about 4.5 hours reduces people's insulin sensitivity by 16% and makes the fat cells 30% more insulin sensitive. This makes your body less capable of metabolizing carbs and promotes storing them as fat. Sleeping 5.5 hours instead of 8.5 per night results in a lower proportion of energy being burned from fat and more of it coming from carbohydrates and protein. This predisposes you to fat gain and muscle loss, which lowers your metabolic rate. Leptin resistance, short sleep duration, is associated with reduced leptin, the satiety hormone, elevated ghrelin, the hunger hormone, and increased body mass index. You're gonna feel less satisfied with eating, while simultaneously being hungrier for more junk food. One study on 12 men found that if they slept only 4 hours a night, they ate on average 559 more calories the following day, compared to sleeping 8 hours. If you want your body to work optimally in a state of higher fat burning, then you should definitely prioritize your sleep. When it comes to fasting, then eating too late or too close to bedtime can lead to fat loss plateaus because your body is more readily available to store that food as fat because you're gonna go to sleep and you're not gonna use those calories. Let me sleep for the love of God! Number four, apple cider vinegar. Apple cider vinegar contains acetic acid, which is a short-chain fatty acid that converts into acetate. This compound can promote fat oxidation and fat loss in a few ways. Acetic acid activates an enzyme AMPK, which promotes ketosis, fat mobilization, and lowers triglycerides in the blood. It also decreases blood sugar, insulin, and the liver's production of glucose. One study found that acetic acid reduced belly fat and the fat in the liver of mice. It also upregulates expression of genes for fatty acid oxidation. And lastly, it suppresses appetite and makes you less hungry by affecting the brain's central appetite regulation. 
In some studies, people who take apple cider vinegar before meals end up consuming 200 to 275 fewer calories for the rest of the day. Most of the proclaimed benefits of apple cider vinegar come from this suppression of appetite, but there's also some direct effects on fat oxidation and fat mobilization. Even if it's just going to suppress your appetite and make you less hungry, it's still very useful and you're gonna end up eating less calories. So I myself tend to like to have maybe one to two tablespoons of apple cider vinegar mixed with water before my meals. Number five, build more muscle mass. How many calories you burn per day is mostly determined by your body weight and muscle mass. Muscle is a more metabolic active organ that requires more calories to maintain. That's why it's easier to lose weight if you have more muscle. Having more muscle makes your body burn more calories at rest. This is perfect for the fasted window because you'll be able to burn calories without doing anything. To build more muscle, you want to do some type of resistance training like weights or calisthenics. These exercises also make you more insulin sensitive and deplete the body from glycogen which increases your tolerance to carbs. The critical point for building muscle with intermittent fasting is eating enough protein and calories during the eating window. If you undereat and overtrain, you may actually end up losing muscle and slowing down your metabolism. It's a trap! Number 6. Eat higher protein after breaking the fast. Protein burns the most calories for digestion. It's called the thermic effect of food, and protein is more costly than carbs or fat. Protein has a thermic effect of 15-25%, to carbs 7-10%, and fat 2 to 5 percent. Higher protein diets tend to be more inducive of fat loss and improved body composition because they make you waste more calories on digestion as well as fill you up much faster. Increased protein intake also promotes muscle growth, thus raising your metabolic rate. After breaking your fast, you would want to consume something that is easy to digest and has protein, so your body could absorb it and shift from the catabolic state of fasting into the anabolic state of eating and build muscle, because if you stay in the catabolic state even after breaking the fast, then you're not going to build muscle and you may end up actually losing it. That's why I like to break my fasts with fast absorbing proteins like eggs or fish and the last meal is going to be something more that is slower to digest like meat because that's going to ensure that you have enough amino acids and protein in your system while you're fasting and that's going to prevent the muscle catabolism. If you want to know how to optimize intermittent fasting, resistance training, sleep and food combining then check out my Metabolic Katawaji Masterclass. But other than that, thanks for watching this video. Make sure you click the like, subscribe, notification bell as well. My name is Seem. Stay optimized, stay empowered.